This channel is not intended for children. Please kickstart responsibly. Hey everybody, so the board game episode is uploading as I record this, which means it's all done. You can check that, if, that out if you need to. Otherwise, we have such a jam-packed episode that I don't even know what to do. I might get to the point where we've finished recording and I run out of space in the descriptions and I might have to move down to the comments in order to put in all the campaigns. So it could be nuts. I'll try to put it all in. I'm truncating all of the names of the campaigns to try to get more characters to fit. So it'll be all in one spot for you. It's been a crazy June. It continues to be a crazy June. And uh, I don't expect it to stop anytime soon. Tuesday alone, there was 66 campaigns that got loaded up. So uh, even split between the two episodes, that's, that's a lot. Just an absolute main ridiculous amount that uh, boggles the mind. And uh, there's no joke that the RPG space has been pushing the growth of Kickstarter over and over and over again. Wow. So let's see what we have in the RPG space, the 3D printable stuff, all the cool stuff that's going on, and uh, see where we get from there. And the first one up, we have Fantasy Trip. This is a ridiculously short campaign. You may have already missed it because Warehouse 23, the people for uh, Steve Jackson Games, tend to make really, really short campaigns. If you can, then you should just follow them if you're a fan of their stuff. Sometimes it's only like three to five days and it's not enough time to capture, uh, even get to the weekend. Uh, but if you follow their name, like click on the, the description, go to the uh, top link, click on the link when Kickstarter opens up, click on Warehouse 23, the name, and then click follow, then you'll be notified whenever a new one pops up and you make sure not to miss anything. If you're a big fan of theirs, or if you're a big fan of anyone, Cool Mini or not, whoever, um, uh, who else is big? Awaken Realms, like all the different companies that make a bunch of different things. I know those are board games, but um, that's how you're going to find out how to catch these while they still have the Kickstarter discounts and you'll never miss out on anything. I know people don't always watch the episodes the day they come out. That's nobody's fault. It's just the way things work. But that's how you would mitigate missing out on a Steve Jackson game promotion during the week when uh, you'd have a chance to grab it. So otherwise, these are quick quests for Fantasy Trip, which is one of their RPGs that has been very popular. It's the Fantasy Realm. And this is a bunch of quests and story hooks and that kind of stuff to uh, see your, your group on their way. Then for whatever system you enjoy, this is the Oracle Issue 11, an RPG magazine, system neutral, whatever it is you like, but it is 5e compatible if you like it. This time, they're going to be on the open ocean. You're going to get some advice on how to do underwater adventures, get some pirate organizations that you can run into, and other cool things. There is a Dragonkin Buccaneer, as you can see there, and a very, very lovely tiefling piece of artwork that uh, should impress anyone. Um, there's some water elemental stuff and some trinkets. There's a few things about breathing underwater and includes one deity for the sea. With uh, It says five NPCs with adventure hooks and then 12 uh, adventure hooks. I'm not sure if that means that there's 17 total adventure hooks or if that means that of the 12 that are there, five include NPCs. Whatever the, the case is, if you're playing Ghosts of Salt Marsh, if you've got some other uh, types of uh, adventures, I think maybe the Paizo announcements might have included some adventures that can take place underwater as well. Uh, I know there were, there were some uh, zines and various um, other things for a zine quest that you might be able to use that were supposed to take place uh, on the open ocean. So. Check it out if you're into that kind of adventure, and uh, you even get an aquatic tavern name generator with over a thousand options. Why not? Then if you need some troop carriers, these are ACP-164 shuttles and spacers. I'm not sure if they go to any particular set. Uh, they're trying hard to avoid mentioning uh, any particular race, but some of the races look a little bit Star Wars-ish. You can swap out heads and that kind of thing. Um, some of them look a little Star Trek-ish. It's hard to say. I know there were some shuttles in Star Trek, um, depending on the version, maybe some TNG, maybe some Deep Space Nine. You can decide for yourself which uh, type of fandom you want it to be for. 
but there are all types of generic alien heads you can swap out and put on the bodies. This is a great use of having a 3D printer or resin printer because then you can really customize it for something that you enjoy and uh, go from there. It would be super cool if they were built to be the size of uh, like G.I. Joe toys because I know that there were some um, five points of articulation uh, Star Trek characters that were made and you could use the bodies and swap out the heads pretty easily. So that would be cool, but I don't think that's the case here. Then we got some terrain. Looks pretty cool. This is for um, whatever fantasy world you need. Some trees, some spires, different rock formations, uh, things that you might end up with uh, to change the elevation of uh, various uh, spots. So they're like mounds. Um, maybe you can even make them like old funerary mounds and that kind of fun business. Or they're just hills, whatever the, the needs of your uh, gaming are. You can use it for war games, you can use it for RPGs. 28 millimeter, 30 second millimeter is the way to uh, to think about these as far as what they can be utilized for. But I mean, if you want them to be bigger mountains and stuff, if you have like six millimeter or 10 millimeter war games to go along with it, I don't think anybody's gonna complain. So there you go, handmade, ready to go for you. And uh, they look pretty neat. So they also have flat spots to put your minis on. So you don't have to worry about crazy geometries and all that. Uh, that you can't otherwise put your units at. Then we have heretical hexes, which is a little weird um, because they kind of give away the game. If you look at the one on the right, that's how a lot of games introduce dungeon rooms. They're more rounded. And the one on the left is what they're proposing to make the squarish rooms work out better. Um, so you could just use that idea anywhere. So what is it that you're going to pay for over the $3? Um, the ability to get some hex maps and the Dungeoneer or Dungeon Runner game as a physical add-on and uh, some other dry erase components. Um, I, that's as far as I can tell what they're actually trying to sell you. Uh, there's some other games such as Triad's Micro Game, Alpha Mecha, Ascension of the Galaxy, and Fantasy Counter. Um, but I don't know what <coughs> the, the hexes are that they're trying to... <coughs> to give you other than maybe a PDF that already has the room outlines made. You could make those yourself with a marker uh, on an existing hex map. So yeah, it's confusing, but they have other pieces of content that you might want to check out. So they've already been hitting their goal. They already get everything that they need to do. Uh, there's no video or anything to explain it, but yeah, maybe, maybe you do. Maybe you, you have an idea. I would just use the marker and be like, thanks. Maybe tip them a couple bucks. And then that sci-fi ACP unit had interchangeable heads. And now we have War for Satonin, which means that you have more interchangeable heads. So some of these characters could be uh, like the guy on the right, which is more of a pirate. Or the dude on the left, which is more of a fantasy-based beholder with a body. There are lots and lots of different options. You might be able to kind of make it out on the left. Uh, but if you look at the picture on the bottom right... There are a lot of headless characters there. Uh, some have interesting poses, which you can utilize, which means you can customize whatever you want for these characters. And, uh, you know, if you felt that perhaps you weren't uh, provided with enough of a particular type of character or a, a type of race or whatever the case is, then you can print off whatever it is that uh, you think you need to have enough of an army or a city or just have a character that has their own kind of flair to it then uh, this should be able to help you out there and for those of you that play the old school games here is creature feature quarterly number six which uh, will provide you with some paper tokens and even some virtual tabletop stuff if you haven't been feeling like you get enough old school essentials um, then maybe this would be the opportunity to pick up some creatures and different designs the uh, way that the zine is provided is you get this black and white drawing that looks pretty cool with whatever the main creature is. And on six, it must be some type of uh, mantid. Not really sure what the uh, creature would be. But in the last ones, you got some cool demons and other uh, hulking characters. Even some parrot-beaked Etten looking type of peoples. So if you're into zines, if you're into um, the old school essentials, type of uh, gaming, then uh, why not expand your horizons and the types of games that you're 
able to play and get the assets that will help you play it digitally uh, right there for you. And I think you can pick up the other um, uh, the other issues as well that have already come out. And then we have dwarves and mechs that are run by dwarves and uh, little concession stands and things because this is the fantasy football version. Uh, I always say that these would make some incredible minis for just about any uh, fantasy game that you wanted to. Um, all you got to do is take a razor blade and chop off the, the football or turn it into a skull or turn it into a weapon or whatever the case is because you got a lot of dynamic poses. You get 12 t dwarf blockers with two troll slayers, two runners, two blitzers, and a death roller. Whatever those things are because I haven't played the, the uh, fantasy football game. Um, but like I said, cute little concession with uh, a big-headed goblin that maybe wants something or is selling something. A couple of different cheerleaders. There's all kinds of things that Generic Miniatures is offering. And after 19 other campaigns of very similar content, they got a lot going on. So uh, you can take a look at their back catalog, maybe contact them. If uh, there's more that you would like, then uh, you'd be all set for football. And then we have a new system called Burst. It comes with the guide and how to run it. It's a genre and setting agnostic system uh, about uh, telling a story. That's what it's mainly about. It's uh, basically the same as everything else that you have. I mean, it's hard to ignore the fact that there are a lot of other game systems out there, but this one is just trying to be simplified um, and not be stuck in any particular style. GURPS and other generic systems do exist, um, but maybe they don't run it quite as quickly. This is supposed to be made super fast paced, so you can just get in and start playing whatever uh, size story that you want. It is under Creative Commons Attribution, so hopefully people will pick it up and uh, create content for it in the future and uh, give it a shot. So. If you've been having a hard time making your stories work or finding a system for it, or you just have uh, a problem where there's too many options for your players that it gives them analysis paralysis, then maybe a system like this will be useful for you. And uh, the rest of your, your group maybe will be willing to try some new genres. Maybe this will be your, your time to have steampunk pirates or something other like that. Diesel punk rollerblade team, who knows. And talking about having variations in uh, the systems, we have uh, Atlas Rise or Die, and the idea here is it's both 5e compatible and compatible with a 2d10 system. And you've got uh, like ships in the sky that shoot down fireballs. You've got, from the look of it, like jungle um, priestesses and warlords and Conan-looking dudes. It is a uh, a brutal world, very similar to what you would have found in Robert E. Howard stuff. And that is all right with me. Um, I really, really hope that in the video they actually purchase the rights for uh, Holy Diver by Dio. Um, because there's, I know the uh, keyboard player for the band and he deserves some cash. And, uh, you know, he worked on it. He made some classics, so he deserves some, some cash. And uh, that everybody doesn't lose their access to... <laughs> The books that they pledge because they get sued out of existence because someone was dumb enough to put a very popular song up uh, without buying a license uh, for thirty-five thousand dollars as an ask. I gotta wonder, like, if they paid for it. So let's hope so, and that it all comes out. If you like riding around on dinosaurs, if you like fighting in the jungles, if you all like all that barbarian type stuff, and. Uh, yeah, maybe you'll back it and ask them for me. See if they paid for it. Then we got ogres. Pay what you want, but they're ogres. Both male and female. Print them out. They look high quality. They're just not that dynamically posed. Um, I'm sure they're just testing out and seeing um, what type of market would be available. Uh, they're confrontational, stoic. That's the kind of look that they've got going with bases and without. So uh, if you're into it, if you need an ogre, then uh, give these guys a shot. Then we have an interesting idea. This is Orbidice. They are orbs and they're dice. So uh, rather than having polyhedrals that you step on and poke you through your foot, that kind of thing, uh, the idea is there is a ball bearing inside of the form of the sphere that weighs it down so that it will uh, hold on a particular number pointing up. 
it's an interesting concept uh, I'm not sure how much longer it takes for it to settle um, obviously there probably be less of a, of a difference if it sits against the side of a uh, of an object or it sits the side of a dice tower that kind of thing it might throw it off um, the way that you won't be able to really tell if it's um, uh, top which way is pointing up uh, but maybe that's not really going to happen I don't know it's a weird shape it's a different shape you don't buy these things because of their functionality you buy these things because of their form and you wanted something entirely different if there was a sports game out there that you needed dice for then maybe even fantasy football whatever the case is I think that would be ideal here uh, or maybe some mages or or some other weird type of spell effect that you wanted to um, incorporate if there was a ball that would roll over like a ball of force that would just like knock everything down and and or absorb everything like a gelatinous sphere then this would be perfect then we're looking at some conquistadors so if you're playing any Aztec games if you're playing any Spanish uh, conquering of South America games if you're just playing some other uh, I don't know anachronistic type of title or war uh, game of some kind then these 28 millimeter metal casted uh, conquistadors will work fine for you or you can opt for the STLs so it's nice to be able to have both depending on which one you prefer and uh, you can go from there whatever type you want there's some mounted units non mountain units whatever you're looking for crossbows uh, all that kind of fun stuff so uh, at last time I painted anything conquistador like was for the Hellboy Wild Hunt expansion and uh, yeah I could say um, I like the look that I did for those ones that were all rusted and um, like zombie like and I think that would make a good faction also if I were to pick these up I'd probably do that again but if you want a more modern cavalry how about the terror rangers these are utility vehicles that uh, you can put in whatever war game you need if you want to play Gaslands with them uh, you can take these guys apart and the wheels even spin it's part of the functionality that they have uh, I like that you can take these things apart because every time I'm supposed to paint a car I feel like it comes out awful uh, because I can't take enough of the pieces off of them that have already been put together or snapped together and uh, I'd like to be able to just really get in there and tape stuff off and and make it work and paint it up like a, the way a real car gets painted with the airbrush so uh, this is a good way to go if you're into these type of utility vehicles on safari or make your own Jurassic Park that could be fun too and then we have the Leshy Bestiary and this is a folklore character that takes place in, I believe, uh, the Czech or other Slavic mythologies, and it is a plant person. So um, they can be blamed for a lot of weirdness that happens, and this one is actually compatible with guacamole because there's an avocado version. <laughs> I don't know if it makes toast magically more expensive, but maybe it does that too. Uh, it is both 5e and Pathfinder 2e compatible. So if you have been playing the latest version of Pathfinder, then uh, you finally get some extra content. Paizo came out with a lot of new um, uh, ideas, new things that they're going to be coming out with throughout the rest of the year recently. So I think it was this week they gave all those announcements. Um, I didn't see all of the, ke the keynotes and whatnots, but uh, I saw some reporting on it. We do not see a lot of Pathfinder 2e content. There's... We, or at this time of year it's been more system agnostic stuff than stuff that would be specifically available for that so it is good for those folks that uh, have yet to be able to find something they like now they can put it on toast then we have one that was going to be on the episode last week but they canceled it and it was a, a game uh, but it had these really cool miniatures it was a game that wasn't really fleshed out and uh I was disappointed because I thought, hey, these would make some great town people. Uh, these would make some great um, like peasants and farmers and that kind of thing and just other types of other characters. I'm glad they came back and now that it's uh, got the, the STL files and everything assigned to it, you can see there on the right, 
they spent a little bit too much of the frame on the background and not enough on the character and I'm not going to spend uh, a whole lot of time manipulating photos because I just don't have the time anymore but you can see it paints up pretty well they look a little on the cartoon side but that's not necessarily a problem um, sometimes you want it on a horror game and you want all this extra blood and guts detail but other times you just want to tell the story and you don't mind if they're a little cartoony and uh, you can just tell the story of a simple hero or a simple um, hero's journey and uh, these folks will work just fine so I think it's a great idea um, they're not you know the best townspeople I've ever seen those were from the uh, Solomon Kane um, uh, Kickstarter uh, those make the best minis that I saw for for townspeople, but these are really really functional and up there So there you go Make an army Then we've got a mystical take on the uh, medical melodrama Grey's Anatomy. This is Faye's Anatomy. So you're gonna have a bunch of weird afflictions and Someone is going to have to figure out what's wrong with them and how to cure them there's two lists of 100 diseases offering 10,000 possible combinations of weird conditions that can happen. And you can play all of the drama up and down that you want that you would find in TV shows. I think this is a great way to get people that are big fans of these type of shows. There's a reason why it's been around for, what, like 20 years now, um, into playing with you. So uh, it's something that they might find... Um, familiar they watched mash they watched house general hospital whatever the case is uh just the idea of having magic instead of medicine is uh, not that far off because a lot of us don't have medical degrees to be able to uh, say what works and what doesn't work um there's a lot of fun things you can put in there if you're going to bring it into ad and d or D, D there is a book out there called the ad and d book of sex that you can add to it which has STDs that you can catch in a fantastical world and I think that would be a fun thing to add on as well Then we have the golden heroes both 32 and 54 millimeters So that means 32 for play 54 for painting and other cool stuff You have captains veterans Malay King Louis the 15th Corsairs uh, you have some people with muskets and that kind of fun stuff a cardinal and even a plague doctor there's a lot of cool things going on here. So you can see what the print, the test prints and renders end up looking like. Um, these would fit perfectly well, as Sam before Solomon Kane. Um, if you wanted something in that world, then uh, this would be a great project to add some extra flair and other characters to go along with it. If you have guns in your campaign, then uh, the holster character that has the, the pistol muskets would work really well but the rest of them don't have uh, firearms so if you uh, needed a captain with a hook in order to play Ghost of Salt Marsh then uh, this would be a good setup um, I like the pose especially on the doctor the plague doctor um, it just has a little bit more attitude than you would see in a lot of the other types of characters that are supposed to be these doctors um, it's not a good job <laughs> There's a reason they had to wear those masks. It, it sucked. And uh, it seems to be holding it up pretty well in the pose. But then we have the Weathered Well. This is a starter adventure for new people. Levels 1 to 2, 3 to 5 players. If you needed something to uh, have some people take an adventure and you didn't want to run the uh, starter kit or the essentials uh, starter kit or the what was the other one the stranger things starter then uh, you have this one you get uh, a couple new magic items to keep it from getting boring and 10 new monsters weasel worms zombie oozes the hagator a vine wrapped crocodilian the bliss lizards clawed butterflies these are some good low-level monsters to fight against an interesting idea there actually is a um a well-based adventure i think in the starter pack so maybe this uh, is something you can slot in there as well if you want to spend some more time doing that um ash shades awakened earth guardians the wild shade knight there's some good art staff of the herdsman uh, Sweet Tooth is the name of a dagger. These are things that you might want to carry through with you for a few levels and not just have it uh, be there. Maybe get some uh, some real um, backstory going on each of those items and uh, you know find more things to do when you get past level two. 
And then we have some 3D city buildings. So they're ready to print. There are a lot of these WoW buildings. Uh, they got uh, Kiwis named Billings. There's two of them that make different buildings and fun things. There's a lot of neat uh, content out there. So it is kind of a saturated market. Um, they print pretty well on FDM. Um, these are all set for being 28 millimeter scales. I don't know if that's the scale of the building or the scale of the people that are supposed to be in the building because it looks a little on the small side, but there's all kinds of things that are here. Uh, I don't know what it is that is keeping people from buying more of it. Uh, maybe the currency because it's a, a Polish currency instead of euros or, or something else. I don't know. But uh, definitely looks like there's some decent buildings and uh, you can run it on your FDM printer without much of a difficult uh, time to, uh, to make it all work. And then part of Pride Month we have Adventuring with Pride, Queer We Go Again. And this is a 5E system book and that's a good thing. Here's why. If you're trying to expose people to uh, something new, then you want to do it one thing at a time. And the thing that should be exposed to people is the ideas of um, the, I guess, the queerness of it. Uh, not necessarily the mechanics. There's no mechanics in 5E for sexuality. That's something that you bring to it on your own. So it makes sense to just go ahead and use the regular old mechanics, the things that you know how to use, and um, the people, you can use these characters, you can use these new... Uh, subclasses for warlock, uh, fighter, and wizard. You can use the NPCs. You can use all the stuff in this book, as long as people don't have to figure out how to read a new uh, sheet. Have you know a new uh, character sheet? There's four one-shot adventures that have been brought in, and uh, you know all the art and everything looks up to par. So take a look at the classes and other fun stuff, and see if that's what you want. If you want to be Missy, Xander Silverleaf, or Kid Lachance, that part is up to you. The Xander character reminds me of Drawn Together. There was a character named Xander who was, who came out of the closet, I think, in Season 2. So, it, that's what it reminds me of. Then we have Pillars of Stone, Part 2. This is uh, some open lock STL files that you can use with a lot of interesting um, types of characters. You have a, a set of Rocky Mountains, a steampunk factory, a sci-fi outpost, and uh, the Pirate Bluffs of Sandstone. So these are some extra accessories. You can use as dice towers. You can use them as trays, pen holders, all that kind of fun stuff. Or you can just have it as terrain because they look really cool. So lots of different things that you can check out. Um, the all-in pledges, how much they run, like 30 bucks, 40 bucks. So there's not too much uh, money invested to have a lot of really cool pieces that you can utilize for lots of different gaming purposes. You can customize it however you like. Then we got more 5e. This is the remnants of Alvarez, and it's a 5e setting that takes place after a demonic invasion. So there is uh, some demon stuff uh, that happens in uh, the first couple books of Adventurers League. Um, I forget the name of it, um, but there's at least two demon books, not just the Baldur's Gate uh, into Descent into Avernus. There was one that came way before that. And uh, this may be a good book here, this Remnants of Alvarez, to bring in shortly after you play through one of those campaigns because you'll have demons and stuff on the mind and uh, you'll be able to run through and, and do that. So uh, it doesn't have a level range. I think that it is just a book about a world that you can check out and go from there. So it will, would be good for you to incorporate characters that you already have if uh, that's the case and uh, you can play through this interesting take on the, their world see all the building and other cool, cool stuff that they've uh, created um, granted the map is a little light but uh, maybe there's a reason for that and then for starfinder we have starfarer species reforged this is a bunch of new player races to make them more interesting customizable and all that kind of stuff i have not played starfinder I am suspicious that because there's a Pathfinder 2nd Edition that there might be a Starfinder 2nd Edition also coming around depending on how well it is um, you know, enjoyed by people. I'm sure it's still being tested out and all that kind of fun stuff. You can get a free preview that has uh, a vulpine shape-shifting species, the Kitsune, 
and the alien abductors the greys and a something called a reborn uh, i'm not sure if that is similar to uh, the ones we got in van richten's guide um, but you can check out a little bit of what those characters have uh, i see some space kobolds i see some uh, like uh, mantis people and other crazy things so there's plenty to go around. They have uh, six pages of content for each of the featured species. I can't read all of them, but it looks like they have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times three. So that's 30. That is 100 pages, 180 pages of content specifically for uh, stuff you can play as. And the same 10 by one for two pages a piece to get additional interesting information out of. So that's an, another 20. And then there's Universal Heritages. There's a lot going on. So if you'd like a Starfinder, give it a shot. And then we got what is not in any way like Morkborg, except in the way that it has a very stylized uh, art uh, design that goes along with it. And this is Arc Doom. And it is rules light, tension heavy, whatever that is supposed to mean. You can get a quick start if you want, and um, this is supposed to be a game where you stop the apocalypse. The art looks most like the game Root, uh, if I'm correct. Uh, I have yet to play that one, but that's what it looks like to me, if I can remember the art style right. And if you are already playing the game Root, if you are in the mood for something that is not post-apocalyptic, but pre-apocalyptic, where there's still some hope left in the world, then maybe this is the rules light system for you. The idea is you're still going to have consequences. And in this one, you're going to have what it says is a new approach to spell casting. Um, you have to do different rituals like burning mementos or eating a door. Other weird things in order to power up your spells. Sounds cool. We'll see how it works out. Then we have a full bestiary for you to print out for yourself. Uh, there's some giant pieces in here, and uh, that part is really cool. Um, some of the stuff looks like it comes straight out of Mortal Kombat. This Juggernaut is really awesome that you can see there in the center towards the right. Uh, but as you can see in the picture on the left, which looks like one of those, um, uh, not Tableau, not Fresco. You know what I'm talking about? They're on the top of the um, sarcophagus. They're on the top of Greek ruins where they have all the different characters on the top. That's what it looks like to me. A good old Menagerie collection. Uh, some of these folks have two heads. Some of these folks have four arms. Some of these folks are not folks at all, but just crazy dog-like things from the bowels of hell. Uh, some of them are cute little dragon kitties. There's a lot of interesting ideas going on in here. Um, there's like a dragon sphinx made out of stone. There's just all kinds of weird things that you won't find in other places and I applaud them for that. Uh, the Emerald Dragon? Sorry, the Opal Mance Udun. They have a, one of the poses which has him like doing his breath weapon that looks really cool. So yeah, uh, there's even a Clockwork Dragon. First time I've seen that in forever. Not like the Chartelin Dragon that uh, is super expensive but you can pick this one up and uh, put it in any universe you want or make it your own little um, was a Bebo the character from uh, Clash of the Titans but it's a dragon come on man and take that to your combat folio which is a plastic uh, rewritable combat sheet for fifth edition so that you can put all the stuff that you're using to track combat down easily it's a tool you can see there's ways for you to hold on to conditions as well as uh, your um, the order for initiative. I'm losing my ability to speak because it's a couple hours past my new bedtime, but stick with me. We're going to make it through this episode. There's still a lot more to go. Um, there is a black rubber dice that they will throw in there for people if that's what you want. Uh, I don't know. It seems like a neat idea. Uh, you might want to make one for yourself if you can. Uh, if you have your own laminating equipment, then maybe you would use your own. But uh, I think it's an interesting way to organize it. Using the dry erase, you'll be able to uh, know how many rounds are left when you have to switch things over for uh, timing-wise when conditions run out. So that is very helpful if you don't want to make one for yourself. 
then an update for the deck of many things we have the deck of nostalgic things which is a bunch of radical items so throwbacks from the 80s and 90s uh, lava lamp is a, the lamp of lava the uh, pet rock is part of it I don't know if it actually does anything there instead of goosebumps there's the book of goosebumping um, yeah there there's a lot of things so butterfly hair clips <laughs> Uh, whatever you saw on people back when we were kids, that is uh, probably going to pop in here, including slap bracelets. Um, yeah, they're changed just enough so it doesn't affect copyright, but I think it would make a great set, especially if you're running the, uh, the Stranger Things uh, starter set, then uh, this might make it more extra 80s for you. Then we have a Fantasy Prunk punk project dread lore i'm not sure what fantasy punk necessarily means um this is a brand new world a brand new system it is based somewhat on the old schools gaming uh it doesn't say if it's old school essentials or not or if it's like on uh ad and d or three and a half or some other system uh, originally but they say that the focus is not on why characters do what they do but on how and what they are doing so uh, I'm not really sure um, where that changes the fun and what other stuff that's going on, but it is definitely a fantasy world. And if you want to challenge gods and write your stories in the st stars, that that is what they are planning here or promising at the very least as part of their tagline. So, all right, we got a couple new systems this uh, episode. This just happens to be one of them. If you needed something else that uh, ran in the old school, you didn't want to use OSC, you didn't want to use OSR, you didn't want to use uh, any of the other ones, then here you go. You got a new one. Then more stuff for Pride Month with a tagline like, Be gay, pilot mechs, and kill Nazis. You know what you're getting in Extreme Meat Punks Forever, the role-playing game. So uh, you get a free kickstart if you wanted to check it out and see what was going on. Um, there's Meat World and Mechs, and uh, that's what they're supposed to be called. Um, it says Powered by Blood. Uh, I don't know if that's the name of the system that they're using by, uh, but there's also Queer Rage and Apocalypse. So if you uh, are interested in that, go for it. Uh, I think maybe... Uh, has something to do with Rock Paper Shotgun uh, and the video game series. Um, that is what it's supposed to be based on. Uh, I have no idea what those are because uh, I don't really go to that website and uh, you know I get some movie news or whatever the case is. If, but if it says that it's powered by the apocalypse, then maybe it is using that system. Lots of other games have as well. Uh, I think it's a good idea to have something familiar, easy to use for people. Uh, if you're going to create a new world, um, then at least you don't have to reinvent every wheel. So, yeah, if you're into this pride movement, if you're into uh, these types of uh, characters and stories and all that kind of stuff, uh, I would say that it's more like Borderlands, but like a gay Borderlands is what it looks like to me from uh, the way that the stories and everything and, and uh, the art and all come together. Then if you want a different type of dice tower, here you go. They have cats and dogs and other fluffy things on them if you want them lasered on, uh, different materials. The idea being that it is art based on your familiar. That's why it's called Familiar Dice Towers. You got bats, you got cats, you got whatever you need for uh, the wizarding world that you are. Some of them, even when they load, uh, fold down, they even look like they're like crated versions of the cats, like it's a pet carrier. I think that's a pretty cool look. So if you're into it, there you go. Uh, whatever your menagerie is that float, you know, follows you around, uh, would you get your Stibbles character? Uh, Stibbles. There was something about Stibbles, and uh, one of the guys did recently, and they're they're promoting the books. You know what I'm talking about. I'm I'm getting tired here, folks, but bear with me. And I talked a little bit about Ghost of Salt Marsh on this episode, um, and there were some other uh, things that have come out recently, and you might need some boats to go along with those types of uh, adventures. Grave Tides. You get three different naval fleets for whatever type of fantasy wargaming or other type of gaming that you want to play with. 
Uh, you can see here there is ice, lightning, and death. So uh, the ice one kind of looks like a flotilla that is on top of, um, well, at least there's like a city or whatever on top of an iceberg. So that part is pretty neat. You get a glacial fortress. And then the, uh, it's called Pycrete, uh, is a type of ice that was mixed with, I think, newspaper or cardboard. Might have been concrete. That might have been the case. But what it ended up doing is it was enough to float and I think they even tried mail building an aircraft carrier out of it. So uh, for the ice ones, you get that. Uh, hailstone mortars, which are kind of neat. The lightning ones have more like a steampunk kind of look to them. Uh, they have uh, Tesla coils and other cool things that go along with it. And then the death ones are like big old fish skeletons and other cool things. So I don't think you have to use it for wargaming. I think if you used it, like I say, for Ghost of Salt Marsh, it'll still look pretty damn cool. They're 3D printable, so just print off whatever it is you think you need. And if you need it for wargaming, use it for that. Now the Witcher board game is out there tearing it up, but maybe instead of on the board game, you need something for yourself on your D&D &D gaming. This is Heliana's Guide to Monster Hunting, and this is all about having big monster hunts. So you go out there and you're looking for one big uh, crazy beast, and you get 50 new monsters to do that with, with 150 items and 200 random encounters, including... A full class, the Monster tamer, tamer, which comes with four subclasses, uh, if that's what you want to play. So if you're out there, uh, you know, hunting along and the ranger isn't good enough for you, then maybe uh, this will help fix some of that. But there's a, a lot about also harvesting and crafting, not just tracking uh, to go along with it. Um, I think it could be a lot of fun. It comes with uh, like a mushroom with a shank and some other interesting little uh, cartoons and pins and things, artwork pieces um, that uh, could go along with it. That uh, artwork there in the upper right is fantastic. Uh, would go really well with that clockwork dragon if you picked them both up together. And one good hunt deserves another. This is the hunt for the nettle worm, so you can go straight into it. Um, this is, takes place in an ancient fort. It's noted as the Sable Cops, and uh, you're looking for a legendary dragon called the nettle worm. So, uh, you could take all of that uh, stuff from the Monster Hunt and use the 20 unique map, uh, maps and PCs and add that to the 15 monsters here. And you could probably uh, make both work pretty well. Uh, the artwork in this one is much more simplistic, uh, but that also means that the price is lower. So it uh, depends on what you're looking for. Not everybody is looking for the super detailed um, fantasy style pictures that uh, the regular... Um, Wizards of the Coast stuff has and uh, you're looking for something that just you know is basic and easy to to explain to people because if it had too much detail then you might take over what their imaginations could fill in so I get it and uh, like I said if it's low enough cost it could be fun for you too and then not a new RPG but an old RPG redone in a new way this is Maze's fantasy role-playing and uh, instead of a dungeon master you have a maze controller uh, easy enough to learn, some type of polymorph system that uh, keeps you going with D4, 6, 8, and 10, so no D20s in this one. Um, and you only roll one die. You only get one die. That die is your character. So as you move up and down, that's how your shapes work. So if you only had one set of dice, this would be the perfect uh, RPG for you. 250 pages of an OSR, old school revival type of system, and instead of a dungeon, you go through a maze. They're basically the same kind of thing, it's just uh, a different kind of way of uh, setting up the uh, the rules. Um, I think everybody's going to want to be the D10, but, you know, the party can consist of a lot of different people, so that part is pretty easy. And then we go to fictional New York City, Monsters of Mirka. This is a big gay energy 5e supplement, uh, as they refer to it. They, um, there are other Merca characters, there are other Merca books that are out there that bring a North America feel to uh, 5e rules. This time you get eight new gods to tackle with uh, 14 total subclasses. 
So there's a lot going on. Four new Warlock Invocations. Um, I don't see them describing uh, what those things are. Um, Order of a Blood Hunter, such as Order of the Donor. So even the Blood Hunter gets more stuff added to it. Uh, there's a Path of Stone Barbarian and a Vogue Monk. Wouldn't the Voguing be more for a Bard? I'm not sure, but maybe that works. Uh, maybe it's because it's it's uh, without a weapon. Hard to say, but uh, there's a lot of cool things in here. The uh, crazy chromatic rainbow uh, cockatrice, or whatever it comes out to being, unicorn cockatrice, uh, seems to be the mascot to go along with it. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's If it's Pride Month and you're looking for some way to celebrate as an ally or as a member of communities, maybe this is the way to go. A lot of people have already picked up the book. Then you have Mortimizer's Magnificent Monsters of the Multiverse. These are four 28 millimeter resin miniatures that you purchase. Um, and you can paint it, you can do whatever you want with it. They have a little bit of dinosaur kind of themes to it. Then there's like just, uh, weird chimeras of like wolf spiders and other weird things that go along to it. Um, one looks like Swamp Thing. So there is some cool things going on. If you have the book for Chult, Temple of Annihilation, then that should help you with the dinosaur stuff. Uh, maybe there's some other weird shambling mounds that you can uh, talk about in the uh, Monster Manual that might help you as well. And I think there's even Mortimizer himself if you needed that as a mini. Then if you ever thought that your dreams were weird enough to be an RPG all on their own, My Body is a Cage is a dream crawler. You take 2d6 and you run through. You can play through a hundred different genres as you can see. Like you just play through the rules there of, uh, of rolling. There's traps, there's other kind of weird things you might see. But the big deal is, it's your dreams. So you can just fall back into sleep with a new adventure every time. And where you can work through some weird thing that you saw in your own dream. Lots of options are available. Uh, it's a lot of ways for people to work through whatever weird things that might be going on in their head. The idea of my body as a cage being sleep paralysis. It is a very metal set of words to throw together there. And then totally different from that is Pony Finder. The fonts make it look like Pathfinder, but this is actually a Savage Worlds game. So uh, I know there are people out there that are into um, Pegasi and ponies and unicorns, and they want to bring that into a point of having like a like a social situation that where it replaces humanoids with equines. If this is for you and you want to play it in Savage Worlds, more power to you. You have the opportunity if it didn't already exist. And then there's another weird one with the animals. This is Sapience. This is a sci-fi RPG about freedom, discrimination, privilege, and if Sapien, Sapience automatically grants you autonomy. Sapience being um, the wisdom and the understanding and self-awareness. That's why we're named after it, the Homo Sapiens, to separate us from other animals takes place in space so you have a lot of uh, different types of weird characters as you can see there in the black and white art in the center um, there's uh, a different die system that allows you to have effort and focus and other types of skills uh, that get utilized um, so if you want to use uh, that system I'm trying to find the name of it but I don't see it that's okay um, interesting I, the reason I read the X-Men is because of the themes of discrimination that are in all of them and it makes it really interesting and I like those books. It seems like that would kind of also fit along here. So uh, if you want to talk about different type of cultures, like that one Star Trek episode with Frank Gorshin where everybody has black and white on either side and then they're discriminating against each other depending on if it's the light, uh, left side or the right side that has the white or black sides on it. So uh, yeah, some interesting stories could pop out and uh, maybe even like animal rights and other weird things whether or not we are the ones in the zoo that's a popular trope maybe you can even use these sci-fi mercenaries to go along with it there's a bunch of cool ones in there uh there has some like some spider walking tanks and mechs and that kind of stuff and then there's some sword wielding um other guys that have the predator uh shoulder mount uh cannon thing that go along with it 
So yeah, lots of different ideas all thrown together. Uh, they have a bunch of different stretch goals left to go. So if you were to join in, you would be backer number three. <laughs> and uh, by the time it gets up funded and all that, then there's a lot of other options available. Uh, I don't know if it's just uh, really recent that uh, it got put on the platform or if people don't want these uh, otherwise cool looking figures. I don't know what it is that people would be looking for. Um, they look a little bit like Halo. Maybe that is a little too much like Halo. There's some cool things going on here and the mech suits and all that. And uh, there's a lot of um, on the RPG, sorry, on the board game episode, some system or some miniature agnostic games that you could play with sci fi stuff. This would work great. So just letting you know, there's options if you want to bundle it all together. Then we move on to Walhalla. This is a collection of three printable shelves. There's STL files so that you can make a dungeon that will fit onto your wall that will let you display all of your minis, or at least the ones that you think would make the best diorama in various configurations. Uh, it looks really cool. So, I mean, even if you had a storefront and you wanted to use these pieces, uh, that would work pretty well. I think it actually works better than, let's say, um, those glass Ikea enclosures that a lot of people use because they're glass. There's nothing going on. There's no a personality to it. It's just clear. So if you wanted some staircases, if you wanted some other like dungeon walls, backgrounds, wells, other weird things, um, a weird old dungeon toilet well or whatever that you wanted to put together, there is uh, a lot of stuff in there. Uh, if you get some stretch goals, then they even have dark forest caverns and undercity uh, textures to be uh, thrown on top of it so yeah lots of cool things can be put in uh, some of them will even be sci-fi styled so uh, I think it's a great addition uh, of a different way to show off your stuff uh, one of the things though if you do it this way unlike or not as much with the IKEA uh, glass uh, display cases you're gonna have to dust them so just keep that part in mind and then we have some more interesting miniatures that would fit pretty well into those uh, Walhalla uh, shelves. This is Warborn Rise of the Barbarian and it has uh, Viking Fantasy which includes terrain files. So um, I don't know if you call it the Bailey or what it is the in the Viking styles like a, an arena. Um, then there's some uh, windmills and other things that look like they would fit pretty well in a dock so maybe a shipwright. Uh, people that know more about Viking culture, or maybe you just ask Shadowversity, then uh, you can find out the names of the different types of buildings. There are some war riders, uh, orc berserkers, that are on top of wolf-like creatures. Uh, and Tolkien, I think they're called wargs. Um, so that part would be pretty neat uh, to go along with it. You could probably do the whole second, it's, I think it's the second movie of The, the Hobbit, where they're out in uh, Lake Town and then the orcs and stuff are attacking them. You could probably use quite a few of these folks in here. Uh, there are frost giants, but some of the frost giants have four arms. And I do not know if that is canonical to Norse mythology or not, but who cares? If you don't like it, break them off. Uh, some interesting looking mountain giants that do not look as dumb as they typically do. And, uh, you know, the iconic storm giants looking all uh, crazy with the hair going everywhere. You can even get a Viking warrior for free. So check it out if you want one. And that is the end of a very long episode. Two very long episodes. My voice is trashed. So thank you guys for sticking with it. If you did, if you can, like, share, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. If you think that there's somebody out there that you know that would enjoy hearing about all this cool stuff that happens on Kickstarter every week. Uh, the share button works pretty well to let them know about the channel. Uh, the like button just tells the algorithm like, hey, there's something out there that you enjoy. And uh, when you hit subscribe, that means you think that uh, I should get a little bit of that, you know, cut that Google's taken all the money for when they put the ads all over my content. And, uh, you know, why not? Because I'm the one working for free. So maybe get a little piece of that taste. Uh, otherwise, I'll just keep coming back week after week, doing what I can. Try to make sure that you stay informed as best you can. Um, like I said at the beginning of the episode, I had to jam pack uh, a whole lot, a whole lot of campaigns. So there may not be much room for the descriptions. They follow through, so you can just 
go back and order if there was something that you uh, you needed. Um, do your best to figure out which uh, which one's which. But it's something that I had to do truncating all the names because that's what came out in June so far, and I was able to fit it. So. Be back next week. I might do a supplemental episode just because things are starting to get stacked up. But I threaten that all the time and never get around to it. But we'll see how it goes. Um, and uh, probably be just as much stuff next time. You guys have a good weekend. And uh, get yourself ready for Father's Day. It's coming up. Have a good one.